Hey everybody, James Maris here, and today we're going to be talking about the treble clef. How it got here, what it means, and how the heck you draw this thing. Like the ampersand, the octothorpe, and the at sign. Does this thing really not have a name? The treble clef is a symbol that a lot of us use every day without even giving it any thought or knowing where it came from, but what is a clef? A clef is a symbol used in music that tells you which pitches are assigned to what line and space of a staff, and a staff is a group of horizontal lines that represent individual pitches. A staff can have a few different options as to how many lines it has, but what you'll run into the most are five lines with four spaces in between them. In my last video, I talked about how the unification of Gregorian chants in the medieval era led to the invention and eventual standardization of music notation as we now know it. Well. That's exactly what happened with the treble clef. When chants were initially written down, composers included lyrics and neumes, which were early symbols used to describe the basic contour of the chant's melody, but not specific pitches. Eventually, composers added a single staff line to identify the bass line or starting pitch, and they used good old-fashioned letters to describe what pitch that line represented. The most common bass line pitches were C, F, and G. And, if you look closely, you'll see that the treble clef looks like a fancy G. Not only that, but this little bullseye is circling the line that represents the pitch, wait for it, G. What? Etc. So you might hear the treble clef also called the G clef, and you'll usually see this clef used for high-pitched instruments like flutes, violins, and trumpets. All right, guys, the moment you've all been waiting for, drawing the treble clef. So, first thing you'll need is some staff paper, but if you don't have that, that's all right. You can just draw five horizontal lines on some blank paper. One, two, three, four, five. All right, next, you want to draw a straight line from the top of the staff all the way to the bottom, and we'll do a little bit of a hook at the end. From the top to the bottom, with a little hook at the end. Then we'll take the top of the line down to the fourth line. We'll do a half circle this way from the top to the fourth line, a half circle. And then from the fourth line, we'll go down all the way to the bottom, a half circle the opposite direction. Bam. And then from here, we're going to do that bullseye around the second line, the G line. We're going to create that bullseye. Bam! Look at that treble clef. And you can do it in one movement if you like. Um, I like to start mine from the bottom. One movement, we have the hook to the top, around to the fourth line, down to the bottom, and bullseye. There you go, treble clef. To show you just how easy it is to draw one of these bad boys, I brought in a special guest, my son, Thaddeus James. Hi, I'm DJ. Let's see how he tackles the treble clef. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw five lines. Go ahead. Five. Mm -hmm. Draw five lines. Five lines. Okay, the line from the top all the way down. And a little J. From the top to the fourth line. Good. From the fourth line to the bottom line, the other way. Nice. And then from the bottom line around the second line. Oh yeah. Nice dude, that's a good one. Awesome. Alright, let's try one more time, but you show me how to do it all by yourself. Do big lines, do five big lines. Nice, dude. Very nice. There you go. Yeah, man. A trouble crap. Good job, man. Not too hard, right? And 
check out these treble clefs from some of your favorite composers. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already, and please consider becoming a patron of mine. Thanks, and keep watching.